Today we have the all new F430 smart camera from Omron. Why does this look so familiar you may ask? Well, because it is not really new. It is actually a MV40 from Microscan or a CS50 from Desoric. This is because Omron eventually realized that their own hardware was not up to par. They recently acquired Microscan, thus the new Omron F430. This is still one of the easiest and definitely the smallest smart cameras we have tested. Start the AutoVision software. Under the Connect tab you will see all connected smart cameras. Select the one you would like to connect to. Check what the IP address of the camera is. Now change your computer's IP address to fit to the camera's network. You could also use the Change Network setting button to change the IP address of the camera. If the camera is connected via Profinet and you do this you will lose connection to the camera. It will then not be visible on the network. If the camera cannot connect to the Profinet controller for 5 minutes, it will revert to the default IP address and will be visible again. Now restart the AutoVision software. If you would like to change the communication settings for the camera, select the camera from the list. Click on the lock to unlock the settings menu. Now click the modify button. Here you can select the industrial protocol if needed. Click apply to save or cancel to exit. Start the AutoVision software and select your camera again. If there was a job loaded onto the camera it would be displayed here. If there are no jobs loaded onto the camera, you will have to create a job by pressing the create new job button. These three buttons are the image auto adjust buttons. Auto calibration, this will adjust the exposure time and gain. Quick focus this will focus on the predominant object in the picture. Click to focus, will focus on the object you click on. After using the auto adjust function you can adjust the exposure time, gain and focus distance manually if needed. Our experience is that that the camera does a good job by itself. Once the auto adjust has been completed, you should have a clearly visible object that is not overexposed. Under the lighting mode heading you can select which kind of lighting you would like to use. Standard is strobe. If you adjust this setting be sure to perform a auto exposure to ensure proper lighting. The camera is equipped with a red and white LED band. Under lighting mode you can choose which of the LEDs should be used. Expansion will use both. Remember to adjust the exposure time after each change. In these fields you see the actual image size from the camera and the quality of the dynamic range. Now that we know the basic functions, I will use them to adjust the picture for the next step. Click on the Edit tab to enter the Tools menu. In this version of the camera sensor we have 5 tools available. Locate Image. This is to locate an image feature or to offset another tool respective to a feature. Count Objects. Is to count objects in a region of interest. Presence Check. Performs a presence or absence check on a specific object or object feature. Measure. Can measure the distance and angle between edges. Logic Function. Used to create a custom logic from multiple tool results. You can also readjust your lighting settings straight from this menu if needed. Under the trigger menu you can select which event will trigger an image acquisition. None, will set the camera to continues capture. Digital, is to trigger from the hardware inputs. Virtual, is to trigger from the industrial protocol. Serial trigger, is to trigger via the RS-323 communications interface. Select the Locate an Image Feature tool. Now click within the image. This will add the tool to the operation sequence. 
Move and adjust the tool, to fit the size and position of the image feature. The outer rectangle is the region of interest, within this region the algorithm will search for the image feature. To teach this feature click on the little hat within the smaller rectangles frame. Here you can adjust the maximum rotation of this feature. This angle pertain to the XY coordinates displayed within the smaller rectangle. Now you can adjust the quality of the fit with the pre-selected settings. The quality of the fit is scaled from 0 to 1 in 0, 0,1 increments. This means 1 is a 100% fit and 0, 0,1 is a 10% fit. Now you can adjust the conformity tolerance. This controls the amount of distortion allowed by the tool. Increasing this amount will allow more distortion of the feature. The quick find is to allow for faster image recognition. For more complex features this can be disabled. This does increase the evaluation time, but will return a much more accurate result. Click the run tab to start execution of the job. With the red square you can stop the execution. Restart it with the play triangle. If the feature is not within the region of interest it will fail the inspection. Now we stop the job execution and readjust the object, then restart execution. Readjusting in live view during job execution. Although the image is clearly within the region of interest, it does not pass the inspection. Now we reselect the image tab, this will allow us to adjust the settings. Select the tool in the list you would like to edit. Clicking on the camera within the image form will grab a new image. As you see we are definitely inside the region of interest. We could adjust the threshold until the image passes inspection. We do suggest that you do not adjust this below 65%. This will be equal to normal in the presets. We prefer to have a fit quality above 80%. To ensure this we will need to disable the quick find. After unchecking the quick find, the feature passes inspection even on the precise setting. When you switch between quick find and not, you will see the amount of detected features change within the region of interest. Select the run tab to start the execution. To save the job to the camera, you will first need to stop the job execution. Then select the image of the microchip. Now select job from PC, because all the changes was made on the software installed on your PC. If the job was already saved on your PC, the job on the camera will have the same name as that of the saved job on your computer. Once saved the job execution will start automatically to save the job to your PC. You will have to stop the job execution again. Then press the save icon. Select the folder to save to, and enter a job name. You now see the job in the camera is called job1, this is because we transferred and saved it before saving it to the PC. If we now save the job to the same slot, it will be renamed to the job name assigned to the job. To see which jobs are stored on the camera, you can click on the connect text above the device name. You will now see that the job with its correct name is saved on the camera. Clicking the boot select field will assign this job as the job to load on boot up.